Hello and welcome to another edition of Draw Along with Dan. I'm cartoonist Dan Letha and today we're going to be drawing a, uh, a snake. It's like I said earlier in another video. This week turned out to be reptile week so I'm sticking with that theme and uh, we are going to draw a snake today. And I have to tell you I thought how do I make a snake last long enough for a lesson because all they are is there's no legs or anything. Well Here's an example of a snake that I think uh, would make a good drawing lesson. Now, as we start out, I have to ask you a question. Um, I break these down. I trace over the, the photo first and kind of break it down into shapes. What is the first thing here to start out with? And it's very important that you start this way. The first thing that I would draw in in uh, consideration for what's going on here is the branch that the snake is resting on because um, that's kind of the foundation piece so let's go with the branch first and I'm gonna draw that all the way through okay so you got the top and then we go with the bottom part of the branch once you've established that then you can draw the rest of the snake and know that it's sitting on that branch. If you just draw the ends of the branch and then try to draw the snake in the middle, it probably won't look quite right. Something won't line up. And so that's why I like to draw through, draw that whole branch, even though you're not going to see all the branch. <clears throat> so the next part that I would draw then would be the uh, the bottom edge of the snake kind of a big smile there alright so right about there and then you could go across just to kind of um, get that top edge general area to get the mm -hmm. basic shape of the snake and then I would draw the next bottom edge And then I would draw the next bottom edge. And I think that approach will help make more sense out of the coils of the snake. <clears throat> and then all you have to do is, well, yeah, let's do this. Okay, we'll go like this and like that. And then right there and right there so you've got those those two sections those two main sections uh, blocked out and then all you have to do for the next part is let's see we'll start right about here and go down and then start here and go down and that's that's about it. Now the, the part of the snake, like the mid ridge on the top of the snake will come to play here in a little bit. But um, And then there's the head, which is kind of a circle, and then like that. And then the eye goes right there. The mouth which there's an interesting thing going on with the mouth of the snake here. Right about here, put the corner of the mouth there, the nose. And then there's one last little part. The tail is, um, we're going to take a little liberty with the tail too. So let's draw the, the bottom edge that's resting on the branch. And then I'm going to have the tail curl around like that. instead of keeping it wrapped around the branch. So there we go. And then some of the shadowing is going to help us set that snake on the branch. So let's uh, let's take the sketch and shrink it down. We'll move it off the branch there. We'll shrink it down. Make our main reference here go away. 
And then we've got our smaller reference up in the corner. So there's our breakdown and our reference. And let's, uh, let's draw that. In fact, I'm going to put this reference over here because this is more of a horizontal long um, piece of artwork or drawing. So uh, I'm trying to make better use out of the screen area that we have. All right, so what did I say we're going to draw first? Let me make sure I got my right layer first. And uh, that's the branch. So let's start drawing the branch. So the branch, top of the branch, and then the bottom of the branch. My branch is a little different here than in the reference, but that's okay. And then the next part of the snake would be to draw the the smiley face. Go up a little bit more. All right, and then establish the uh, the top of the snake. So the coils don't go above that line about. And then we have to do the the bottom of the next coil which starts right about here try to stay somewhat the same with the width right about there and then the next one in draw this one right here alright and then we can close those loops or those coils. Let's draw the end rounded off there. And then start about where that other one finished. At that point right here. And then do the same over here. And then do the one over here. So pretty easy so far. Now it gets a little more complicated because we've got the the head of the snake and the rest of the, this interesting coil here. So I'm going to draw a little bit out of order here compared to what I traced, but um, let's just establish where the head is first. So I'll put that circle there for the head and then the chin. At the bottom jaw of the snake is resting on the coils here. And then let's uh, let's do this right about half well right about halfway here I want to say something like that. We'll draw the arch for this coil here. And then <clears throat> the top of the neck something like that and we can go ahead and fix the uh, the thickness there make it consistent so it doesn't have a super fat neck and I think that's that does it right there so We've got the uh, the snake basically blocked out, although let's do the tail too. Move the screen up a little bit. And I'll end it there just for the sake of ending it on the screen. And then um, there we go. So we've got our snake basically blocked out. Now I'm going to add some other lines here because um, you'll notice that the uh, the snake resting on the branch adds some shadow. So I'm just going to make some indication for where the shadow is. And then the snake on itself also adds some shadow.
And then this side of the snake, there's a ridge. Draw an indication line for that. Right there. And then that ridge, the bottom of that ridge, is dark too. Um, and then there's the... Uh, that ridge sort of continues like that for this part of the snake. All right, now the head. There's an eye ridge right here. And then those big snake eyes, we're going to make those exaggerated a bit. And then the, mouth, the nose kind of rounds off a little bit right there. Mouth. And then the, uh, the nostrils for that. Now what kind of snake is this? This is a, a constrictor. And um, I think it's a, a boa. I think. One of the two is either a boa or a python. Um, but these snakes have a particular shape of their head. That's a bit different from other snakes. So, just keep that in mind as we draw this. <clears throat> so I think um, I think that'll do it for our blocking in sketch. So I'm going to knock that back, and uh, get myself a different layer there. And let's change my pen color as we do go to inks. And um, as we started before, let's draw that tree in. And then, of course, we're not going to draw it through, but we have that guideline. So we know exactly where we're going to draw the tree. And it will work. It's a little tree bump texture there. It's not a smooth cylinder. It's got that bark on it. And so I think adding some lumpiness to the line will help communicate that that's a rough bark tree. Okay. <clears throat> Let's draw that bottom line for the, the snake. Come up around line number one, and then we can continue that around to there, that point right there. <clears throat> and then um, let's continue this down here and up. And then the uh, this spot right here and we'll ink that so that the snake's face is actually behind that top of that coil go down and around and then now we've got the, the bottom of the neck here I'll just draw that that right there. I love the, the shape of the snake's head. You don't have to draw the exact same uh, shapes and stuff as you see in the photo, but they, they certainly do help you get things started in a, in a right direction. All right. And then we're going to, I'm going to draw like this. We'll go across for that mid ridge. That's important here. And then this part of the snake comes back up like this. All right. And then the top of the snake's the back of the head. It's 
kind of flat and then it rounds off. And then that eye ridge. Top of the snout, fairly flat. I exaggerated the roundness of the nose a little bit there, but then the mouth actually it goes back. So let's do that. And then the, the mouth. Like that, and then the bottom line right there. So there's our snake. And let's uh let's draw the nose in and then the eye. Now you could um I suppose go like a little bag under his eye there. If you went like this, and I'm going to undo this, so just uh, bear with me as I experiment a little bit because you can do that digitally. You could draw an eye like that on the snake. And I suppose because it would be a cartoon, you can get away with it. But uh, but I, the snakes have these pupils that are long. and thin and very snake-like. Not that other animals don't also have long, thin pupils and they're not snakes, but uh, I don't know if that's quite right. Let me do that again. But you have to get the, the, the shape of the eye too. I'm not drawing it straight like that. Um, the eye is curved and so There we go. I think that works right there. Now some of the, sh the, the, the detail for some of the scales. Snakes have this uh, section of the mouth here and other reptiles do too. Where they've got this um, scale pattern of thicker scales along the the edge of their mouth kind of their lip area and um, so for our scales we're gonna do kind of a cross hatch pattern again kind of keeping in mind the shape of the snake and that's kind of a quick way to to do some scales. There would be a number of ways. Maybe I'll do like a scale uh, lesson sometime. <clears throat> now it can be fun to do these scale patterns where the shadow is on the snake. And that not only tells you what the the snake is covered with but it gives you an indication of the shadowing on the snake and it helps communicate the form more than just following the shape of the snake with the curvature of the lines that you're using so let's see there's darkness over here so let's do some more scales here And then again, trying to follow the shape of the snake. And um, there's actually a harder shadow right here where the the head is casting a shadow on the, on the neck right there. So. And then the next spot that we have some shadow action. I'm actually going to draw this line in here real light. That's that ridge part, the, the upper 
part of the snake, the top ridge, the back, if you want to put it that way. Just following, trying to be consistent here. And then the shadowing kind of ends as you go up right here. And then we'll come around. Crosshatching is, is a real fun activity. I started doing that when I was a pretty young artist. And uh, it's it's great exercise for your hands. And it can add some great detail to an art, to a drawing. And then the shadow, like I said, on the next part right here, um, continues down so Sometimes when I do scales, I'll do um, kind of a dot pattern, and uh, that might work along with some of this cross hatching too. There we go with that. And then we can give a little more feel for some roundness here. Just on that dark edge. And then that tree that bark texture to it so I'm just kind of do some thick squiggles right here and then where that shadow is on the, the that the snake is casting on the branch put that in and maybe some like bark indication lines here as it bark then that adds some solidity to the to the branch otherwise it just looks like this these lines it's hard to distinguish that what that that that's a solid shape so adding a little detail to the branch i think helps make that make more sense visually easily now the uh let's see there's I'll use a little shadowing help here And then um, actually some shadowing help that would continue down the bottom of that, the snake.
obviously you don't have to follow every little line that I'm doing exactly. Now there's other parts of the snake too that um, you can kind of fill in some just to kind of give it a continued scale indication. some here if you feel like you need to give it a little more form in some sections. And then the shadow on the tree branch underneath here. You see how that sets the snake right on that branch right there. That works really well too if you you've got standing figures that you're you're drawing. Put a little indication of some shadow underneath the feet and it puts them on the ground. Got the other the tail. There we go. Now the tail doesn't look like it has a lot of shadow indication in the photo, but uh, I'm going to do some, a little bit of shadow indication with some scale pattern there. And then something with the tail too, you can do to add a little bit of interest here is the bottom of the snake has a different scale pattern. It's got these long, long wide scales. And then there's a shadow underneath the tail right here. Get that other side, the dark side of the tree right here. And then, boy, the, the bark pattern really gets rough down here. go and there's our snake now I can add a little more detail on the eye I'm gonna make my pen smaller and sometimes it's fun to add some stuff like this some line work that again indicates the shape of the the eye and then the bottom of those lines, I'm going to make a little thicker. There we go. And um, like I said, you could add some some dots like that that kind of help indicate scales as well. that and then you can take the liberty too of having some fun with a tongue on the snake so you get the tongue coming out of the mouth you don't see that in the photo but uh, but hey you're the artist so add some shadow a little bit as it's coming out wiggle lines <laughs> there we go and uh, all right so let's um, let's take that sketch away so we can see it cleanly in fact I want to take that upper sketch away too there we go so we get a nice clean look at our snake and uh, and then how do you finish your drawing you uh, put your name on it so 
write my name over here. Dan Letha. Dot com. So there's our snake for the day, another reptile for this week. And uh, I hope you had fun. Please share, let your friends and family know about these cartooning lessons that I produce Monday through Friday. And uh, you can watch them live sometimes at noon Eastern time. And uh, it's, uh, it's fun drawing little creatures and animals. Make suggestions as to some of the things you'd like me to draw in the future. And um, I'll see you next time on Draw Along with Dan. Thanks for watching.